Hello friends, today I'm going to make some carnation flour for a challenge by Brust Official and Creative Hands from whom I used to buy acid-free artist grade papers. I have took some white cardstock and pastel papers. This is an assorted pack of 40 sheets, so it has different colors into it. You can use the link of their website that I have given in the description. To start with, I have a rough design of the carnation that I am going to work on. I have also selected red and green color cardstock. This cardstock is 160 GSM which works really well for onage quilling. Next, I am cutting the sheets to 5 mm in width. I put both the paper sheets one over the other, align them on my cutting mat and cut them with a paper cutter. So again this is the design and today I am going to work directly on the white sheet. But if you like the design, it is also available on my Etsy shop. So do check out the link in the description. Before going on to the quilling part, it's time to clean up my table. Take some glue on the glue board, pick up glue on the edge of the paper strip and now it's time to stick them. The flower stock is made with straight strips of green and for the base of the flower I am using some U shape that I manipulate with a paper strip. For the petals I take red paper strips and fold them in zigzag manner. I use my tweezer to fold the zigzags as it gives sharp bends. Make the zigzags and leave long straight parts on the sides to make the petals. Now I paste them, bending the whole petal to the side giving a flowy movement. I do the same for all the petals. I make a bunch of petals similar way in different sizes and shapes and then I attach them all together using glue. Carnations are very simple to make even with onage quilling. Also remember, carnation can be gifted for love and affection and it is also the birth flower for the month of January. So make these carnation flowers and gift them for January bonds. When all the petals are done, we can go on with the stem part again. Carnation also has small leaf-like protrusions at each node where the leaves come out. So I make few short pointy V shapes to go at each node. Each node has two of these protrusions and one leaf on each protrusion. At the next node, I am adding another stalk for the bud and not forgetting the protrusions. In the previous node, I add thin and long leaves and continuing my way to finish the flower. When the whole flower is done, I am going to finally watercolor it. Well, this part is also a part of an experiment showing how to undercolor quilling works. I hope I have covered almost all part of how I did this. If you have more questions, do let me know in the comments. If you're new to onage quilling and would love to know more tips and tricks on onage quilling, then do watch this video.